We really are celebrating some local heroes. And as a child, Peter Beasley loved technology so much that he took every watch his parents bought him. He took it apart to see how they worked, and they eventually just stopped buying watches for him. But his love for technology continued. And during the pandemic, he co-founded a nonprofit called Blacks United in Leading Technology, or BUILT. And he joins us to talk about his efforts to diversify the technology world. Hey, Peter, how are you? I am wonderful, Paige. It's so great to join you here. I am so excited to talk to you. Boy, you love technology, little, literally all of your life. Where do you think that passion for tech came from? Um, I think it came from uh, me as a kid trying to justify to my parents why I broke so many of those watches. Uh, <laughs> I like to tinker. <laughs> I like to tinker. I was curious, and it made me a builder of all things. I never knew I'd end up starting a group naming named Bill. I was one of those people who knew what they want to do in life early as a freshman in high school. I made straight A's in math and was a math teacher that suggested I get into engineering. Well, and you certainly did. You spent an extraordinary career in the field of technology. But with that said, you say that technology field is far less diverse than other industries. Why do you think that is? How long do we have here again? So, um, <laughs> not, not, not to be three nothing, minutes to be exact. <laughs> this thing called slavery of black people occurred in America in the 1600s and it's 2022, and race relations in America are still a problem, and it's really a problem worldwide. Some of the factors which have included black people from tech is being told to pursue, quote, easier professions, lack of resources to teach tech in many black communities. People, i.e. racist, haters, really bad people, actively excluding black people from tech and people in some cases not believing uh, they can uh, work in tech, black people not working, mm -hmm. uh, believing they can work in tech. Yeah, so all of those reasons certainly contributed to that lower statistic of the number of uh, blacks that do work in the tech industry. And what I think is interesting is that you started Built during the pandemic. And let's talk about a pivot, my goodness. How did this idea come about and what methods did you use to get Built built. <laughs> Thank you again. Uh, so we're a professional organization of black people and their allies, a lot of allies to help in racial inequalities in tech. Uh, we got started as a grassroots movement. There was a group in Dallas, there was a group in LA and all across the country. I was uh, semi-retired. Oh, by the way, I'm a black person in tech myself <laughs> and uh, had the time and passion to give back and tech had been good to me. So I reached out and contacted all the separate groups to come together as one, and uh, the rest is history, so to speak. Uh, easy, huh? Yeah. All right. Well, you, there's so much more to talk about, particularly, you know, all the efforts that you are doing and the programs that you offer. Can you briefly tell me a little bit about these programs and how you created them to help others thrive? Well, yes, uh, we have a very important mission. Um, in America, black people represent about 14% of the U.S. population, but we hold less than 7% of the jobs in tech. And so the benefits of diversity with employers is very well known. And those benefits include lucrative salaries and profits flowing into underserved populations. We have an important mission and we hold the door open for other people uh, as black people come through too. Wonderful. You also have an event this Friday that's in, that's particularly interesting. Can you tell us about that and the reason why you decided to do this event on Friday? Yes, uh, it uh, pains me quite a bit to, to share this, but we at Bill were a victim of a hate crime Monday. No one was killed, no one was uh, injured physically, but um, in a Zoom um, a video conference of one of our national events or international events, we had a racially motivated, uh, pre-planned, multi-account attack. And, you know, I can't really remember how far back it's been that I've heard the uh, N-word lodge offensively at me. Um, and as a bit founder, built founder, uh, it's a personal attack at the space that we've created for Black people. And it was just a repeatable, I mean, repeated and a, a song. And that and was all during a Zoom meeting, which you had some people there that were intended to be there to help support your efforts and to learn more. And then you had some people that crashed that Zoom meeting in a very, very negative way. I, I applaud you for having this event on Friday. We really do appreciate it. Yes, the event Friday is our makeup. where We will not be deterred or stopped, so we are holding the same event, our open conversations we do at the second Monday of every month. This one will be Friday. 
And uh, we will talk about, again, what we do, the good work that we do. But we'll also have a frank conversation about what it's like being in tech. We had a lot of new chapter leaders and new people the first time to our event, and it was it was very ugly. Well, thank you so much. We really do appreciate you joining us, Peter. Uh, thank you so much, Paige. All right, you're welcome now.